Welcome to Doug Does Stuff. I'm Doug and today we're talking multicolor printing. Today we're going to make two models. We're going to make a two color key tag and then a two color coaster that's flush because you know you want your coasters to be flush. Now I've not done a lot of two color or multicolor printing in the past. I've just done a, a little bit of two color stuff coming from my old enders. Uh, you know, it, you could do it. It's a little bit difficult. You got to put a stop uh, command in the G code and then manually swap out your filament when you get there and start it back up. So it's possible and I've done it, but you know, I was getting tired of that. So I went out and I bought myself an any cubic Cobra S1 combo for the sole purpose of speeding up my printing, making multicolor prints easier, having better quality and getting more reliable printing well if you've been following along the channel you know that's not happening right well this is not what that video is about this is about setting up our two color prints so when our cobra is working we can get going on it so go ahead hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave a comment and uh this is how i do my two color prints we're going to be using today two different logos of a now defunct local railroad that's a favorite of my son and i the New Haven Railroad and the New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad from a yesteryear. Um, but let me start here. I have spent hours, and I mean countless hours, recreating the logos, more so of the New York, New Haven and Hartford one uh, from old pictures, you know, in Illustrator so that I could have them as vectors and bring them into STLs and other, other places. So when that inevitable First comment comes along, STL, question mark, the answer is going to be no. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work and, you know, feel free to go and do it. I apologize, but I promise you, yes, you who's shaking your head, you'll be okay. You really were. You really will. You're going to be fine. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get over into Tinkercad and get things started. All right, here we are over in Tinkercad to make our two models today. The first one being a key tag and the second one being the coaster. Um, you know, you can use any program you want. Uh, I'm going to use Tinkercad because it's easy. But if you're familiar with something else, please, by all means, go for it. Have fun. And uh, here we go. So uh, the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to uh, load up our STLs. I made a simple rectangle here with a cutout uh, of a cylinder just so you can put it on a keychain. And then I also brought in my vector file, which as you can see, it has a little problem right down there at the bottom of the H, but that's not for right now. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to line these two things up on top of each other. And to do that, um, you're going to have to select both, hit the letter L, select the one you want to base it off of and align those. Now, the alignment's going to be off because for this, at least it's taking into account the uh, little circle there. So I'm going to have to move one thing over or the other. And that's what I'm doing right there. And it looks pretty good. Our next problem is the NH is buried into the black base. So to solve that, we're going to click on the H, maybe, maybe there it is. We're going to hit the letter W, and then we're going to select the top of the key tag base. Then you hit the letter D, and voila, it pops up. It brings it to that surface. So now that we have our key tag all set up here, bring it over here in the middle. Let's do a quick look. Looks good. I want to colorize it to the colors that it's eventually going to be. It doesn't really matter, um, but this is how I want it to look. The NH is going to be orange and the rest is going to be black. All right, so now that I have those uh, the way I want, now we have to go ahead and export it. I thought I saw something where if you group it and then change it to multicolor, you can export at once. It wasn't working for me, so this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to export each color in individually. So click on the one you want. I'm going to click on the NH, hit export as an STL. That brings it down there. Then I'm going to click on the base and I'm going to do the same thing, export. All right, so now that those are exported, we actually want to jump over into our downloads. 
Okay, so now that we're over here in our downloads, we want to go ahead and we want to rename these what they are. So we, when we import them into the slicer, it's easier to figure out. Uh, the first one was the one I downloaded in a nice little preview window over here on the side that you can't see, but I promise it's there. Uh, showing the NH, and then the second one here is going to be the base. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that to NH base. All right, cool. So that's done. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into the slicer. All right, so here we are in the AnyCubic Next slicer, but this is going to be the same on uh, any Orca base slicer you might be using, whether it be Bamboo slicer. Reality Print, the AnyCubic Next, or any Orca based slicer that, that you might use. Some things might look different, be in different places, but it is essentially going to be the same. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and add your STLs. So you're going to click this button up here and you're going to add. That's going to bring open the open window. All right, so we have open here. We're gonna choose our two that we want, which is the two here. You're gonna hit open, and it's gonna bring that into the AnyCubic or Orca Slicer and ask you this question. Load this file as a single object with multiple parts. You're gonna hit yes. All right, so now that puts us here, and it brings it in as a one color print. Now, if you're on uh, global here and you want to click on objects you're going to see you have two objects now we have to go ahead and color this the way we want to so to color this is pretty easy you come over here to color and as long as you have all of your filaments set up here uh, if you don't if you only have one you have to add oh no I changed all the colors you got to add the colors in to uh, the slicer and you change them there all right so back to what we were doing, we're over here. Now, I like to use the fill for this kind of thing, and I'm gonna fill in all of the faces that I want to be orange. Well, listen, it's not just those two. You gotta remember to click all of these as well. Oh, there's my error. All right, bing, bang, boom. Go through here quickly. No, all right. Oh, don't miss that one back there. There it is. There, 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 there. All right, looks good, right? So once you're done with that, you click this, you go to slice plate, and you're ready to print. Wait a minute, why is that an hour? Look up here, it tells you I have 15 filament changes. That can't be right. It's only supposed to be one, so I did something wrong. Go back to prepare, click on that. Here's the thing. You have to go, oh yeah, you gotta go all the way around your model and see if you missed one. It's a good indicator. See, as you keep turning, you're gonna find, oh no, that one, undo. Uh, you just have to, you know, take your time, find all the faces, and then just do a couple of rotations around, uh, sneaky, sneaky. Do a couple rotations. Now let's see what happens when we slice the plate. I missed one again. Gosh darn it. How did I miss one? All right. Check it out. Hit this. All right. Let's go slow here. Why are we getting 15 flushes? Huh. Well, we shouldn't be having 15 color changes, that's for sure. You see it? Ah, there it is. Oh, sneaky. Ah, I was starting to think maybe there was something wrong. Let's try that again. Slice it, dice it. One filament change. Down to 37 minutes to print this. Looks pretty good. And then we just go ahead and print it. So that's the first one. That's the key tag. The key tag is pretty easy. Um, let's go on to the coaster. All right, so here we go. We're back in Tinkercad. I've already made my coaster. I made uh, the base, which is green, three millimeters. I made a three millimeter ring, and then I made my imported STL. Uh, this is the one, this one took me a long time. But, all right, let's get these all lined up. Again, select everything, hit the letter L, 
we want it doesn't really matter but let's base it off of the green middle middle done right no not yet we have to uh get this onto the onto the base so you click it hit d and now everything is three millimeters you can just double check that's the ring that's the green and that's the font the logo cool so now everything is three millimeters thick we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same process um, exporting each one individually so export the ring and export the base then export the logo. Cool. All right, I'm going to take a second to rename those in my downloads folder. So here we go. All right, here we are. So let's go ahead and rename these. This first one uh, is the ring. So we're going to put this as coaster ring. And then we're going to come over to the next one. And this is the coaster base. So again, rename this base. And then this is just the logo itself. Cool, all done. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump right back into the Anycubic Slicer. All right, here we are back in the Anycubic Slicer and we are gonna do just like we did before. We're going to import our file. So we want the one, two, three, open. Uh, it's going to ask this question again and you're going to hit yes and there you go again if you're on global switch over to objects and you'll see all three um over here they don't you can't see them yet because everything is black well i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to set my colors as the colors i want which is going to be green and again colors don't matter it's more about what filament you have loaded in each uh slot so i have green i have white I don't know, well, that's uh, blue. And uh, just to have differentiation here, uh, I don't know, uh, pink. Perfect, now you can see. All right, so I want the logo to be white, so I can go ahead and click on white, or I can hit the number two, which makes it easier. The ring is also number, number three, number two. Cool, that easy. I come up, I hit slice, Problem. I can't see the logo. Well, it makes sense that the base would be at the bottom. Excuse the dog when you do it, right? But it, it can't. It's got to be at the top. And everything else is underneath it. So now when I hit slice, now it all comes through. And we're going to have our flush print of um, on the base plate. So let's hit slice, which we did. But here's the thing, it's 16 filament changes, a flush time of 42 minutes and a total model time of two hours. That's, that's crazy, but here's why, All right? If we come over here and we, we go layer by layer, we'll see, come on, come on down, that those two colors are all the way through. We don't need the two colors to go all the way through the base or through the coaster. So let's get back into Tinkercad wow. and, and fix our problem. All right, here we are back in Tinkercad. And as you can see, I have two more uh, models already made up, one with a full ring and one with a one millimeter ring. And you can see the difference there. This goes all the way down and this is only on the top. I, I think I'm gonna start with this one to see how it goes. Um, what I did was I made the ring one, that's the green, click on the white, there it is. I made it one millimeter, and then I did the same thing with the logo in the background, one millimeter. Now, why one millimeter? Well, if I'm printing at a 0.2 millimeter height, that would be five layers of that color, and hopefully that would be enough so that I don't have any uh, transfusion of light from the green through the white. So that's why I did that. And all I did was I did the same idea of um, using Tinkercad and putting things on flat faces and moving them up and down. So again, I'm going to have to go ahead and I'm going to have to export all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You've already seen it. And let's get back over into uh, the slicer. So uh, before we jump over into the Anycubic Slicer, I just want to point something out here. 
when you go to export, you have to, even though you might already have the base from this one down here, you have to export this base so that they're all in the same position. All right, I guess you could probably figure out a way to align them in the slicer, but you know, just if you re-export it, you'll see what I mean. So let's get back over into the Ending Cubic Slicer. All right, now that we're here, we want to go ahead and add the objects one more time. So add, and we want the base, the one and the one. We're gonna hit open, yep, one file, bring it in. And again, we get our uh, all of our parts in one color, go over to objects, and you can see we have the base, the logo, which we want to be white, which it is already, oh, base two, ha, huh? because the second plate, two and two. And now you can see that, again, it doesn't look like it's really there, but when we hit slice plate, we now have, check this out, we now have five filament changes. We've taken off an hour of our print, and when we go to look at it, it's only going to print uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So one, two, three, four, and five. Five layers at that. Well, here's the thing. I don't want to print it this way. I want to click this thing, come here, hit prepare it. I want to flip it over. I want to lay it on its face. So I want to lay it on that face. And now you can see if you scroll down or not, move your thing down, you can see there's the logo. There is the ring. Don't move around. And we're just going to ahead and we're going to slice it again. And voila, we have our, we have six filament changes this time. Uh, what was last time? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, why are we doing it this way? We're doing it this way so that we get the nice, smooth surface here and then this is the coaster upside down so anyway uh thanks for watching uh, it might be a lengthier video uh but i do appreciate your time and i hope this helps you and good luck out there hit the like hit the subscribe i'm doug and hopefully i can do stuff on my any cubic cobra someday and maybe i can do this print have a good one and uh maybe enjoy 3d printing i hope somebody can at least